people have been asking, you know, how to clear the restrictions in these multiple orifice metering devices that carrier and train, for example, love to use. So I just changed out two plugged filter dryers in this unit. And lo and behold, circuit one got high subcooling, high superheat. And I just couldn't leave it like that. You know, this compressor is probably already doomed because look at it. See, the, these are both original compressors, I believe. But look, look at the color of the stickers on the compressor one. And the paint's peeled off from high superheat, from high compression that makes your discharge way up there. I was probably running over 300. So that compressor is probably doomed later anyway. But put new filter dryers in down there. And they are twice the size of the originals. Those who superseded them. Now I'm going to try to do this little trick, this little procedure here to blow out these accurators without actually changing the header assembly. Because normally you'll get the whole header assembly. Now this is a straight cool unit with gas heat. So this makes this a lot less complicated than the heat pumps that use this crap. So um, somebody talked about this a couple years ago and I've since done it and it's worked pretty much every time. So I'm going to try to capture some of it now. Um, if the Samsung S8 Plus doesn't overheat. <laughs> but what I'm going to do is I have my torch ready. I have the nitrogen hooked up. This line here, I unwelded the liquid line right here. Okay, and there's the other end of it. I have taken a pinch off tool. That way when I crank this nitrogen, it should be ready to go. When I can open this sucker, it should just uh, come back only this way and, and exit right here. So what I'm going to do is take my torch, I'm going to preheat a couple orifices and then crank up the nitro. And it should blow, but you know, the debris back out right here. This has worked a couple times. You don't want to, you want to have a pretty lazy play to make my little blue feather uh, long. Maybe not that long. Heat up some of these orifices. You don't want to really you know, liquefy the silk rod. A couple maybe we'll do two at a time. Kind of get them almost cherry red. Crank that nitro. Got more experience doing this on the carrier. I'm just kind of letting it rip. The uh, heating them up kind of loosens the, you know, carbonized oil, you know, waxes, you know, that oil breaks down into. Just kind of clear out the pistons, hopefully. That. Okay, where was I before my daughter called me rudely disrupting my video? So uh, I already uh, Got it pressure tested and it is evacuating now I did uh, Put some solder over this right here if you look closely on these things you could see there's little crimp marks where they use a tool that makes this dimpled area that suspends the uh, orifice in there so <laughs> I saw what looked to have split on this one down here so after I let the nitrogen pressure down I brazed over the top of that sucker and then I pressure tested it. I didn't see any leaks anywhere so I didn't even put bubbles on that to see if it was leaking I just saw the I saw a mark which I was pretty sure nitrogen blew out through there so I soldered over that capped it so, yep, let the sucker uh, back now, it's down to almost a thousand microns there. I'll let it evacuate and then I'll start it up and we will see if it's yay 
or nay? If it's nay, then, well, the next step will be to tell them that they need a new leading device, which means converting to TXV, because I don't bother pulling these out just to put another one of these bastards back in. I'm putting in a thermal expansion valve, which is how it should have been in the first place. Okay, just got done starting it back up, and it looks like it was a major success. So right now my pressures, and I'll put them on screen also, um, high side's a little high, probably because the panel's letting some air bypass the coil, and it is hot, but about 310 or so, over 80 suction. And when we switch this to a superheat and subcooling, subcooling reads real high, but that is also because this is on the discharge, it's not on the liquid. This unit here does not, and I'll show you in a second, does not have uh, taps for liquid line. So that's gonna read a little higher than what it would be if you had this on liquid. Uh, 79, 80 PSI, and my superheat keeps fluctuating, you know. Now it's actually showing really low, like three degrees superheat. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's not um, restricting. And that refrigerant charge is critical. I, um, it's seven, 0.4 pounds of R22 and I only added you know a couple more extra ounces for the larger filter that's in the liquid line so it's not overcharged so yeah it's some taking a hot gas pressure right here so it'd be a little bit lower if, you, if they had a liquid line tap but a lot of trains do on that line right there a lot of units but it doesn't on this one and I, di I just didn't bother brazing in a liquid tap sometimes I would just drill a hole and put one right there and I didn't would give me a little more accurate reading for the superheat. I mean, sorry, for the subcooling. But second stage just satisfied. I took back, put that back on. Um, so yeah, so you can see it's nice. Yeah, that's cold, man. Woo! Not starving that coil anymore. Nope. And got low 50s for supply temperature. So this sucker is kicking butt. In fact, I see here's my jumper, stage two. You know, I just turned it on, but if I turn it off, you can see the thermostat below is already satisfied. Uh, so, turn all this off, and now it's running off the thermostat below, just one stage of cooling. So, yep. Guaranteed though, this compressor is probably gonna be a goner. I mean, just, I hate seeing, when you see burnt paint like that, and the sticker is burnt, that means this sucker was hot. That's from high, um, high superheat and high compression uh, ratio at the compressor. You will get um, very high discharge gas temperatures, over 300 degrees, and it starts breaking down. So it's kind of funny. You get a little restriction, get high uh, superheat, uh, you know, low suction, high compressor compression. You get high discharge temperature, starts breaking oil down plugs the filter even more it's a chain reaction chain reaction to sure death but if this probably wasn't a good compressor it'd be dead already but it's got good compression i mean it's running now so awesome so far i've had 100 percent success at doing that um orifice trick of uh using the torch to heat them up really hot pretty much cherry red but not melting them and then blowing nitrogen through it cycling nitrogen as you're getting those all hot and blowing it out an opening real close to that like i did and it worked i will put up on the screen now before the filter change and then in the middle all above i'll put what it was after i changed the filter dryer and then there's the reading for what it is now new filter dryer and having the orifices cleared so that's just kick ass that's awesome and it works.
<laughs> Kits available for upgrade to thermal expansion valve. See ordering guide. That is freaking funny. Oh wow. <laughs>